you represent here could best be illustrated for the struggle that lies ahead with the totally irresponsible budget that was passed by the majority in the House of Representatives a short time ago. For two years, we've had some bipartisan cooperation. For two years, we've been able to get not all the cuts. You know, when they raised the issue of the deficits, the deficits would be about $40 billion less than they are right now if we had gotten all that we asked for in the line of cuts. But the, def the budget, I don't know what game they were playing, but it certainly could not have been aimed at anyone in which we could compromise and come to a meeting of the minds. It is a budget that is totally in the spirit of what's been going on for the past decades, calling for some $315 billion in new taxes, call calling for a couple of hundred billion dollars over the next few years in increased social spending, canceling, actually canceling, a number of the savings or programs and the, or the savings that we've achieved in these uh, couple of years that we've been working on that. So there's going to be, uh, we're going to be joined in quite a battle. Now, you all know, and I suppose you've been told in some of the meetings before this lunch and before I got here about some of the improvements that have taken place, that 12.4% inflation rate, well, for the last six months, it's been running at four-tenths of 1%. And uh, we know about the interest rates. They haven't come down as far as they should and must, but still, they have dropped to less than half of what they were. All kinds of good indicators. Uh, increased productivity up for several months in a row. <clears throat> A number of other things, but I think the most significant indicator that we really have turned the economy around and that we are improving is the fact that they're no longer calling our plan Reaganomics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know what name will be hung on to it as the recovery proceeds, but I'm not going to go on talking here any more about uh, many of these things except to emphasize again, we have a, a major job ahead of us. Uh, no question about distortions that have been made and a number of subjects and things that we're doing. But uh, we believe that we've got a pretty good record of achieving most of what or much of what we set out to do as of this point. But as we also said at the beginning, it was going to take more uh, than even a few years. It was going to take time to uh, clean up uh, what we had inherited. I was talking here at the table about our national defenses. Uh, the people of this country have virtually been turned around in their thinking by a constant drumbeat of propaganda, aided and abetted by much of the press, that somehow uh, we're still standing here foolishly throwing money uh, at the problem of national security and without any strategic plan or knowledge of what we're doing. Well, don't you believe it? We know what we're doing and what we've accomplished when we came here, the volunteer military was considered a failure. Today, uh, I don't know of any time ever that we've had a higher esprit de corps and morale than we have in the military, the volunteer military. We have the highest percentage of high school graduates. We have the highest percentage of people that are average or above in intelligence uh, in the services, even including back in the days when it was a draft military. and. We are progressing with weapon systems that, well, that's why the Soviet Union has agreed to meet with us on disarmament proposals in Geneva, is because for the first time in a long time, they've decided that maybe our country does have the will to do it. And it was all illustrated in a cartoon that's become my favorite when Brezhnev was still alive. It was a cartoon of Brezhnev saying to a Russian general, I liked the arms race better when we were the only ones in it. <laughs> But I'm not going to talk any more here because you've probably got particular subjects that you've probably said sometimes reading the paper, by golly, I'd like to ask him. Well, go ahead. <laughs> Let's have a dialogue here. So. Yeah. Are you going to run again, Mr. President? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. Let me, let me answer that and 
kind of a, in a long way. Let me say, first of all, uh, there's a, whether it's, the answer is yes or no, there's a matter of timing. If the answer is one way, you become a lame duck automatically. If the answer is the other way, everything you try to do is viewed as political and part of the campaign. So uh, there's a timing matter involved. The other part is I've said that I will, I think the people tell you whether you should run again, and I will remember your reaction to the question <laughs> making that decision. But let me just say one other thing, too, and I know that many of you, and I appreciate this, many of you have had feelings about maybe starting a committee or this or that after this or that to say something. And I have to ask you, please leave the timing uh, to me because um, if something is started of that kind under the laws that have grown out of past misdeeds, uh, I would either be forced to repudiate you or uh, declare yes uh, ahead of when I think it's a proper time if that's going to be the answer. So uh, <laughs> please just have confidence that I'll make the decision and, uh, uh, and what I honestly believe is the right decision at the right time. Someone else? That sounded like a filibuster, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, yes. the, the people that I know and talk to are very strong in believing that we should not be encouraged to compromise with the Democrat majority in the House on the budget in significant ways with respect to tax increases and not going to the wall on some further cuts in spending. And I wanted to uh, pass that on. I know that that's the way you feel. But I do feel that way. They, they have gone so far overboard in the spending area that there's no way that we could find a meeting of the minds between them on the basis of that budget. Now, if they, if they intended that budget as a, well, they said of it that what they really intended with it was a declaration, a redeclaration of Democrat philosophy. And that's exactly what it is, spend and spend and tax and tax. And I think we should leave them stuck with it. I think if we don't, yield uh, to something of that kind, we've, we've got the biggest campaign issue in the world to just hold these two things up in front of the people and say, look, this is what if you keep <laughs> sending them back to Washington, they're going to do. And uh, as for the much of their tax, it was not going to be new tax. It was uh, based on canceling the third year of the income tax cut and canceling indexing. Now, for all of these charges that were unfair, 78% of the savings to the taxpayers in indexing will go to people below the $50,000 a year mark. The people that are above that and up in the upper brackets, indexing isn't going to do them any good. They're already in the top bracket. They can't get shoved into another bracket by inflation. But I can only tell you that about the third year of the tax cut and about indexing, I sleep with a pen under my pillow so I won't waste any time vetoing any of the cast. <laughs> Yes, Jimmy. Mr. President, uh, I understand that several members of Congress who were permitted to see some classified information relating to the El Salvador Central American problem came away supporters and believers in your vote. I know there are reasons why all of that material isn't readily available, but it would be possible to declassify some of it and make more of it available to other members. We are talking right now and in conference, so I can't give you a specific answer about uh, getting the whole matter of Central America before the people of the country. Because there again, this drumbeat of propaganda has, a, we can tell from the polls, that most people just don't understand the importance and what's going on down there. And so I think very shortly we'll have an answer and we will go to the people with it to tell the people what is taking place. You know, this thing about what are we worried about them down there? You'd be surprised how many cities in the United States are closer to Nicaragua than they are to Washington, D.C. Uh, that's our backyard. And um, we're not going to let Cuba or the Soviet Union by way of Cuba and Nicaragua take over here in this Western Hemisphere.
impact is? Uh, the impact of the events of the last couple of days in Beirut when I have in the Middle East. I actually, I don't think any impact of the, other than the sorrow that we all feel for that tragedy. And let me just say right now, if, if I have a hate in the world, it is for the so-called terrorists. This has got to be the, the most cowardly uh, element of humanity there is in the world to blindly go forth with the destructive device of that kind without any regard as to whether their own relatives might be uh, caught up in the street on it. But um, I have heard, I, Jamal, President Jamal of Lebanon called and I know what was on his mind. He was worried that maybe we were going to fall back and retreat from our efforts at peace there and I assured him that uh, there was no retreat <laughs> at all where we're concerned and that's not going to change it. Uh, our feeling. I have heard from others in the area and uh, everyone in our own allies uh, in Europe, they're all of us, all of them concerned that if that this might turn us away. No, we're going right ahead with what what we've been seeking and that is to find a way to for peace in the Middle East and not driven away by this and uh, I haven't seen any uh, any evidence of uh, on the part of of even the people that uh, that we should take a second look at this and uh, uh, fall back or, or retreat. And uh, we're, we're just not going to do it. Well, all right, and then I've got it. Then it's all right. <laughs> I forgot I'd said just one. He had said just one more. Yeah. Mr. President, I want to tell you that I think, I know in my heart, everyone here, that we're most grateful to be with you. We hope to be with you for the next six years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh. Are, we, are we going to do some picture taking in the next room? Oh, well, I know I'm going to get a chance to say hello individually to each one of you because I'm going in the next room and you're going to come by and we'll take some pictures also. And that, uh, I just said when I came here and uh, first hadn't thought about that that I was going to get to say hello to each one of you. I, said here I should have eaten early so that I could table hop, uh, but uh, I won't have to do this. So I'll see you all in the next room. <laughs>